week gone of around the country playing. You had fun? You had a good time playing this week? I guess speak. You know, I'm looking back a little bit earlier in your career. You were kind of the reluctant movie star, really. This was not like the first priority for your life. You were doing other things with it. And you kind of said, okay, I'll try this. Uh, are you very happy now when you're on a movie set? Is that maybe some of the happiest places you go? We do have a lot of good times on the movie sets. I don't know if happy is the right word I would choose. I'm very grateful that God has given me the opportunity to bring people happiness and joy. And uh, you see it when you go all, all around the world, people... You know, get very happy when they see a movie star and when they see your films. Some of them do anyway. So for me, I, I would say that, you know, happiness is a thing that we all experience once in a while, but gratitude is something we can have all the time. Mm -hmm. Your spirituality <clears throat> has certainly increased. Were you always a very spiritual person, maybe that hadn't really grown completely yet? Maybe it was maybe held down a little bit? Well, I think that even, you know, in the higher stages of enlightenment, you know, there's always growing taking place. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's my humble guess anyway. I think I've always been very spiritual. I just kind of kept it to myself. Mm -hmm. You know, being a, a movie star comes with a lot of territory, and we've certainly had nothing but discussion in the last few weeks about all the things that go with it. It's a tricky road, this publicity thing, putting your lives out in front of a camera, putting yourself in a movie. Do you uh, think about that a lot, about how destructive it can be to your life or how it bothers you sometimes? Well, one cannot help think about it on a daily basis because, you know, as well as, you know, receiving the many blessings that uh, the film business, when you're successful, can bring you, you also inherit many uh, hardships that create great suffering. And particularly when you're somebody who is a spiritual man or a quiet man or a family man or a private man, you know, all of those things are violated on a daily basis. Do you ever get scared? Um, fear is not, you know, uh, something that I have to struggle with as much as most people. Because it can be dangerous being a public figure as well. We've seen that before. Yeah, I mean, that's not one of the things I can complain about is fear. I may be uncomfortable, I may be frustrated, I might be unhappy. I may feel as though it's... Um, you know, stifling me or any one of many things, but fear is not something I usually feel. Have you ever felt that your privacy was invaded? Oh, every day. Every day. I mean, people stalking you in parking lots and just that, they want your picture. What is it they want, do you think, from you? They want you Sometimes, doing something bad, maybe, or? Well, I mean, you know, everybody wants something. Sometimes they want to make a lot of money off you. That's the most common thing, mm -hmm. and the way they do that is by getting a picture and making something up, you know. Uh, you had an affair with one of the sheep on the ranch or, you know, one of the ugly girls that, you know, is better looking than the sheep. or They'll, they'll make up anything. It's just, okay. you know, uh, sometimes they want your mind, sometimes they want your body, sometimes they want your reputation. But usually uh, it boils down to jealousy, vindictiveness, greed. I mean, is there anything we can do about this since we live in a country that we, the First Amendment is the First Amendment and... It gets abused every hour on the hour. Yeah, but, I mean, do you want to see more laws as, a, as someone in your position or what? I don't have the answer to that. All I can tell you is our forefathers did not create the Constitution so that people could invade the privacy and personal lives of other people, make up horrible, vicious lies about them, and print them and sell them for a lot of money, which is what most of the tabloid folks do now. And, in fact, uh, publications that people are calling legitimate now are now succumbing to the same kind of nonsense. Uh, we could certainly try to make some of that criminal. It's the only way that we could ever get people to be responsible is if they have to start going to jail. Do you feel like you're going into another second part, maybe another chapter in your career now? I know you're going to try to produce, and you've already directed, but you're going to try to take more control of your career and maybe some of the business aspects of it? Well, it's sort of a daily, uh, daily struggle, you know, to try to ensure the quality of what you're doing, you know. You know, do you get frustrated that people expect you to be in certain kind of movie and that you would like to try to do some other things comedy or anything else but it doesn't seem to work for a lot of people but people seem to want to put a square peg in a square hole and they like you one way well uh, you know once again that's another daily struggle is trying to you know expand uh, the horizon of the kinds of films I'd like to make 
uh, I've not wanted to make just action films for a long time. I'm breaking away from the people who've controlled me, and now I'm able to start to make different kinds of films. I know, so you've put a little, you've put more of a message. Uh, you know, really, all your films have had a message, though. It's either been government, it's been something since the very beginning. You've always had that subliminal message, and maybe even more overt in the last couple. Right. That make you that kind of cuts down whether or not you're just doing a play no action film. You've always been a little bit more than that, anyway. Thank I you. I think. I think so too, but most people miss that. But I mean, because there was if that wasn't a message in the first film, Above the Law, which I still think maybe is my favorite one, uh, they didn't get it. I mean, there was lots of messages in there. It sure was. A lot of folks didn't get it, but there a lot of real, real stuff there. So, where do you think Steven Seagal will be ten years from now? <laughs> Up in the Himalayas in a cave, probably. <laughs> <laughs> think you'll be doing this? I have no idea. Whatever I can do to bring people joy and. He's the suffering of others is what I'd like to be able to do. That's a nice thing to be able to do with, with a little bit of power and a little bit of money, isn't it? To be able to do good things. That's my great desire. That's a good ambition. Fire down below. When you look at all the different movies, do you look at them like chapters in a book? Some are good chapters, some are bad chapters, some are more fun than others. Are you too close to this one now to really put some perspective on it? I don't know if I'm too close. I think it's probably the best work I've done. I think it's the best film I've been in. And uh, I like the message. I like in it more than chapters of the book of being able to get up to bat. You know, you just need a chance. And sometimes you hit a home run and sometimes you strike out. But, you know, because we're all human, nobody can hit a home run every time. But the fact of the matter is you've got to get up there and swing. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I've always loved about the critics. They're people who traditionally have never been up to bat. But they love to sit back and say bad things about people. Uh, the fact of the matter is that you know, every human being should be able to have aspirations and dreams and at least try to fulfill them, and whether he's failed or not. God bless him for trying, and I think that's really important. Have you noticed about a lot of critics, they don't seem to like action movies. I've noticed that since I've been in this business. They seem to really pick... My favorite films are action movies. I'm not sure what that says about me, but they don't seem to generally... Very rarely do they ever even dare like one. Well, it's a humorous. It's you know the critics are in general very, very timid, you know, cowardly people who, you know, get this sort of false sense of you know machismo and strength because they think that they can annihilate anybody, and it is easy to attack action films uh, because they also generally have stars who have this macho image, and of course that's naturally you know that maybe they were the bully that beat them up in school. Exactly, that's the f you know first kind of person they want to go after but I mean interestingly enough you know to do good action is just as hard as doing good acting oh, no and, question they, about it. and they can happen in the same film does it make you feel a little better or maybe looking give you a little hope for the future that someone who is as typecast as they can be Sylvester Stallone who really has never been we've never been to see what he can do acting wise he was in the movie Copland and he's fantastic I always knew he could do it but I mean he is being able to break away from that Rocky Rambo mold a little bit and do something with a De Niro and those kind of people. Is that, you've thought about, you've noticed that? Well, I haven't seen Copland. I mean, I find it, you know, one of the most hilarious things that I've ever heard in my life when people come up to me and say, well, he got fat for the movie because he wanted people to take him serious. And, you know, they think that, you know, uh, you know somebody has to gain weight, you know, and, and be fat for a movie. Well, you could put on a, a purple wig and a dress or get fat or skinny. It doesn't matter. You know, the way you get people to take you serious is by finding a great piece, great property with a great character, and then being able to perform in it, you know, in a great way. And, uh, you know, certainly that's something that almost every actor uh, who has any brains wants to do. But every actor seems to have that problem. You know, Mel uh, Gibson's had to fight with the studio in order to do Hamlet. He's had to fight with him and had, he almost lost the battle to do Braveheart. That was a real struggle to get that movie made. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to leave the studio system. I am leaving it. That's why Mel left. That's why, you know, all the people who care about the kind of quality that they're doing, you know, do not want to be, uh, you know, living a life where somebody's foot on their head the whole time. But you will do action movies. You're just not sure. going to do every, every movie. It's not going to be an action movie. That's right. All right. Now my partner will come in now and do the music aspect of this job. Don't go away. It's a tag team. It's a tag team. Two different stories, two different things.